Hi and welcome to this little vehicle sketching process video. My name is Ilko Siebring, also known as Diepfris. This video will be about sketching a spaceship orthographic front view with pen and markers. Some parts are sped up a little bit. I guess it will run for about nine minutes. To start off the design, I'm sketching out a base shape with a very light gray marker. The goal here is to find a nice silhouette first. The silhouette of your vehicle or any other object you sketch is the first thing people notice when they'll look at your design. Therefore, you want a strong or interesting silhouette, something that grabs the attention of the viewer right away. I'm using a marker value zero so I can sketch out freely without worrying that these marks will show up in the final sketch. It's just dark enough to serve as sort of an underlay for the line work. At this point in the sketch, I'm already putting down some marks that could serve as guidelines for what the inside of the silhouette could look like. The whole blocking in phase is rather fast. I think it took me about two minutes in real time for this sketch, but I suggest that if you want to try this method out yourself, that you spend as much time as you need to come up with a shape that you like and that inspires you. After all, this stage determines the outcome the most and you don't want to spend a lot of time working on a sketch that you don't really like. So it's important to be happy with this stage before you continue. If you're not happy, just start over. Personally, I'm always looking for a shape that interests me or at least inspires me to keep sketching and to figure out the rest of the design. Now, the more experienced you'll get in doing these types of sketches, the better you'll be able to assess if the shapes you put down are going to work out and the less time you will need for this stage. But when you're just starting out, take your time. After I'm happy with my block-in, I start my line work. This is partly following the block-in and partly just, well, let's call it freestyling. Because I often just let my pen go where it wants to go. And I try to let each line inspire the next. It is wise though, to try and think in 3D at this stage, to think about your 2D sketch as a 3D object. The marker phase that will come after this will help to bring out the three dimensionality of the shapes. But at the same time, the lines you put down here should not work against that. Also, the marker phase tends to be much easier when you've already thought about what the object looks like in 3D space. I always used to be very precious with my lines in a sense that they needed to be perfect. I needed to hit every line, so to speak. But that mentality tends to freeze you up resulting in lines that are stiff, lines that are off, and a lot of stress in general. Basically a not so fun experience. So I decided to let go of that and just put the lines down without thinking too much, without overthinking. And I feel it takes the pressure away and in the end gives the sketch a liveliness that would not be there when every line is perfect or put down with a ruler. So here I'm thinking about big shapes, but also about smaller shapes like panels, cables, and tacky greeblies. Details that give the ship some scale and some secondary interest. The goal here is to make the sketch look detailed without spelling everything out for the viewer. I let the light come straight down, a little bit from the left of the paper, and this determines what value to put where. I start off with a number 5 to block out everything that is of what I think would be middle value. Then I take a number 7 to block out the bottom shapes that catch little light, the bottom of the hull, the bottom of the wings, etc. I use a black brush pen for the windows and some areas that catch almost no light. 
like the inside of the nose and also for some bottom parts and panels that might just have a different local color. It usually is a good idea to not be too generous with the brush pen because it could overpower everything you did before. Just some accents is usually enough. As with the line work, I try to be loose and not too precious. I also do not try to fill in the areas completely up to the line work, like if it were a coloring book. This also helps to make the sketch more lively and at the same time is less stressful. Here I'm going back in to darken some of the values and to make sure I have a nice value range going on and also to reinforce the direction of the light. It comes from top left, so bottom right should be the darkest. Then I'll do some final details with the brush pen, like cables and some panel greeblies. And I'll bring out my pen again and uh, thicken some lines, usually overlapping lines or bottom lines. Adding weight to these lines helps, to, helps the viewer with understanding the design and reading the perspective. What is in front of what? Lastly, I'll put down some highlights with a white paint pen. I'll place these highlights below panel lines uh, to simulate that there is some sort of little edge that will catch the light. I also place dots uh, at the corners of faces that face the light. And I also use the white paint pen to indicate like LED type lights uh, on certain places in the design that I think could use a little bit of extra uh, contrast. It's important to not put these highlights everywhere, just, just like with the dark accents. I think it's about balance in your sketch. And too much highlights or accents will usually, well, sort of kill your sketch. You can see also that I'm searching, like, where can I put the highlights? Where can they, where can I place them so they add to the sketch? And then some last minute details, some cleanups, etc. That's about it. Um, this was just a pretty short video. Uh, I hope it was informative nevertheless. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll try to answer them. I'll try to do some more videos in the near future, so stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, you can find me on Instagram as Deepfris. Thanks for watching and good luck sketching.